This is complete list of documented, realized attempts to assassinate Adolf Hitler. The Attempt 1 In 1923 Hitler again narrowly escaped death. Two attempts were made on his life by unknown assassins. The first occurred in Thuringia where shots get fired at Hitler from a crowd. A second, in which shots were fired at his car, in Leipzig. The Attempt 2 in 1929 an SS soldier on guard duty at the sport ballist reportedly secreted a bomb under the speaker's platform minutes before Hitler was scheduled to appear. After the usual introductions, Hitler began a speech anticipated to last several hours. The SS guard felt a sudden need to use the men's room. Confident that there was ample time in which to set off the bomb, he left his position for what he expected would be only a brief absence. Unfortunately for him and the rest of the world, he was accidentally locked in the toilet. Unable to free himself from the locked room in time, he failed to trigger the bomb. Hitler escaped injury or death because of an odd twist of fate. A friend later called it the joke of the century. The history of the world might have been changed if he hadn't had to go to the bathroom. The Attempt 3 One night in January 1932 Hitler and dined at Tom Hotel with members of his staff as usual but within an hour of eating the meal most of his staff had fallen ill with food poisoning. Hitler was the least affected, possibly because he ate a vegetarian diet. Nobody died and nobody was charged, and no arrests were made. The Attempt 4 Ludwig Gassner, a German politician and member of the Bavarian State Parliament, sent a poison letter to Hitler from France. But an acquaintance of Asner warned Hitler and the letter was intercepted. In 1933, Ludwig Gassner was noticed again when the Bavarian legation reported in Berlin that he had issued a curious death threat against Hitler, who had recently been appointed Chancellor, on the grounds that Hitler was a complete madman who would lead the country into misery, and that's what Ludwig Gassner wanted to stop him by killing Hitler. Although police were on alert for the would-be assassin, his threats against Hitler was ignorant as unfounded, when he demanded a large sum of money in exchange for abandoning his plans. Ludwig Asner disappeared under mysterious circumstances in 1933. The Attempt 5 Train 1932 March 15 Hitler was traveling from Munich to Weimar with Joseph Goebbels and William Frick. Shots were fired at the carriage they were traveling in but no one was hurt. The Attempt 6 Car 1932 June Hitler was traveling in a car near to Strassland. A group of men were waiting at a tight turn, with the intention of ambushing the car and killing Hitler. However, the car managed to get away. The Attempt 7 Car 1932 July Hitler made a speech to mass of people at Freiburg on July 29th. Just before or just after the speech a crowd threw stones at his car. One stone hit him on the head but he was otherwise unhurt. The Attempt 8 on March 3, 1933, one day before the newly appointed Chancellor was to address a political rally in Königsberg to campaign for his slate of candidates in the March 5 Reichstag elections, police moved against a communist group whose leader, a ship's carpenter named Kurt Lutter, had organized a plot to blow up the speaker's platform while Hitler spoke. The plan took form during true clandestine meetings held in February, that were infiltrated by a police informer, who leaked the information to the authorities. An investigation failed to uncover the explosives, and since none of the conspirators would confess to the crime of attempted political assassination, which carried the death penalty, Lutter and his group were ultimately released after being detained for several months. The Attempt 9 Hitler was due to attend a ceremony to commemorate the opening of the new Reichstag building, and the agreement that had led to the passing of the Enabling Act. Known as the Day of Potsdam, the ceremony was to take place in the Garrison Church, on March 21. The day before the ceremony authorities discovered a tunnel that had been recently constructed beneath the church. It was thought that the tunnel would be packed with explosives, and detonated while Hitler and Hindenburg were in the church. The Attempt 10 Hitler's life was threatened by a would-be killer at Hitler's country house not far from Birch to Sagarden. The hilly countryside surrounding the house was crisscrossed with numerous walking paths along which Hitler liked to stroll. 
usually accompanied by a small entourage of security people and political followers. The security men maintained a discreet distance and performed their duties as unobtrusively as possible. Repeated observances of a man in an SA uniform, who was acting in a suspicious manner, and was watching Hitler's group carefully did not escape the attention of the security forces. During a routine security check, a personal search revealed that he was carrying a loaded handgun, a serious violation of law, and he was immediately arrested. The Attempt 11 After Hitler picked up friends from München and Rosenheim, unknown people shoot at the car of Hitler, somewhere on the road between Rosenheim and the Abers Salzburg, but he was otherwise unhurt. Throughout 1933 and 1934, reports of planned attempts on Hitler's life were received almost weekly by police. They included bizarre stories of exploding fountain pens, tunnels crammed with explosives dug under buildings in which he was to appear, poison squirted in his face, and dozens of others including one claiming his plane would be shot down over East Prussia. Many of these rumors were not taken seriously, largely because of the sources, however, at least 14 were deemed sufficiently valid to merit earnest investigation by criminal police officials. The Attempt 12 The coup attempt against the Führer in 1934 by the leaders of the SA, on Hedem Ernst Röhm, was Hitler's pretext for the arrest and murder of several hundred SA leaders from June 30, 1934, through July 2, 1934. Hitler himself participated in Röhm's arrest while the latter was vacationing in Bad Wies, south of Munich. Hitler somehow persuaded the SA team to retire, so reluctantly they returned to their truck and started out on the road to Munich. Minutes after leaving Bad Wies, the men had a change of heart and resolved to kill Hitler, disarm his security force, and rescue the SA leaders, so they rose concealing their truck well off the highway, they established a deadly ambush. However, Hitler distrusted the SA group and decided to take an alternate route to Munich as a precaution, so Hitler survived from a very serious assassination attempt. The Attempt 13 Dr. Helmut Milius was a German industrialist, leader of the party of the radical middle class, and then the editor of far-right newspaper in Frankfurt. Dr. Helmut Milius and retired Navy Captain Hermann Erhardt developed a plan to infiltrate Hitler's SS bodyguard units with their own supporters. So successful were they that 160 men penetrated SS security and began accumulating data on Hitler's movements. The coup never came about because the Gestapo, having been informed of the plan, infiltrated the group and arrested most of the participants. Dr. Helmut Milius managed to avoid getting arrested due to the influence of his friend, General Erich von Manstein, and the strangest thing is that he made his way to work in the army as a the catering manager. The Attempt 14 Beppo Rummer, the communist, opposed the Nazi regime right from the start and, as early as 1934, actively participated in plans to assassinate Hitler with Nikolaus von Hallam, which led to his arrest and imprisonment in the Dachau concentration camp until 1939. Upon his release, Beppo Rummer immediately became involved with the workers' opposition, publishing a bulletin for the resistance, creating a network of opposition workplace cells, and again laying plans for an assassination attempt on Hitler. These cells were later infiltrated by the Gestapo and Beppo Rummer was arrested in February 1942 for activities related to abetting the enemy and corruption of military readiness, and under torture revealed the assassination plot. Nikolaus von Hallam was arrested on February 26, 1942 by the Gestapo and suffered torture through a number of prisons and concentration camps, including Sachsenhausen, but did not reveal any of his fellow conspirators. In June 1944, Shortly before the July 20, 1944 coup attempt, the People's Court indicted Hallam for conspiracy to commit treason and undermining the war effort. Beppo Rummer was sentenced to death on June 16, 1944 and executed on September 25 of that year at Brandenburg Garden Prison, in Brandenburg and Der Havel. As Nikolaus von Hallam was sentenced to death, and executed by Gilliden in Brandenburg Garden Prison, on October 9, 1944. The Attempt 15 in 1935, communists planned an attack on Hitler, Werner von Blomberg, Hermann Goering, Joseph Goebbels and Rudolf Hess at Berlin, but them failed to carry out their plan. The Attempt 16 
ASA man, named Krauss, who was granted permission to present a petition personally to the Führer, was the would-be assassin who came nearest to succeeding. At the Berghof, Hitler's Bavarian Alps retreat, he fired a single shot at Hitler and missed. He was shot at five times by the guards and died instantly. His motives are unknown, but it might be surmised that they had something to do with the murder of Ruham, say leader, in 1934. The Attempt 17 Another SA man named Heinrich Gruno, who had not swallowed Ernst Rund's murder, got in touch with Otto Strasser, head of the Black Front opposition movement to Hitler, and set up a plan to kill Hitler while the Führer was driven to his bull of Berchtesgarten retreat. Gruno was a member of the close guard protecting Hitler at Berchtesgarten and knew that at some spot on the road, the car had to slow down to less than 15 miles per hour and argued to Strasser that it would be a propitious location to shot at Hitler. Strasser agreed to the plot and Gruno went to execute his murderous task. Unfortunately, Hitler had taken the wheel on this day and Gruno shot the driver in the back seat, while Hitler escaped alive. The irony is that Gruno, persuaded that he had succeeded in his attack, committed suicide on the spot while Hitler the driver scared to death rushed out of the car that he had put to a sudden halt. Hitler's chauffeur, Julius Schreck, was hit in the chest, the jaw and his right temple, but he died of a tooth infection. The Attempt 18 Several officials in the German Foreign Office attempted to instigate an army coup against Hitler. They distributed a letter asserting that, the oath of allegiance to Hitler has lost its meaning since he is ready to sacrifice Germany, and that, now was the time to act but the Gestapo infiltrated the group, all the members of the group were killed. The Attempt 19 Helmut Hirsch, a German Jew and a member of the Strasserist Black Front, was tasked with planting two suitcases filled with explosives at the Nazi party headquarters in Nuremberg. The plot was revealed to the Gestapo by a double agent, and Helmut Hirsch was executed by decapitation. The Attempt 20 In 1936, elements of the Israeli World Federation attempted to assassinate Adolf Hitler, but then failed to carry out their plan, and instead assassinated Hitler's deputy, Wilhelm Gustloff, in Switzerland. The World Israeli Federation is a Jewish organization based in Paris founded in 1860 by the Jew Yitzhak Kremier, French Minister of Justice in 1870, to defend the rights of Jews around the world. The Attempt 21 Dr. Johannes von Donani of the Abwehr, personal advisor to Reich Minister of Justice Franz Gertner, had disapproved of Hitler and his Nazi party almost from the beginning when, through his post in the Attorney General's office, in Hamburg, he was exposed firsthand to Nazi brutality. As early as 1937 Donanyi tried to recruit Hitler's adjutant, Hans Wiedemann, in a plot to shoot the Führer, but him failed in that. The Attempt 22 On November 26, mental patient Joseph Thomas, who traveled from Elberfeld to Berlin to shoot Hitler and Air Force Commander Hermann Goering, was arrested by the Gestapo after he confessed his intent. No one ever heard from him again. The Attempt 23 An unidentified man in SS uniform reportedly tried to kill Hitler during a rally at the Berlin Sport Palast and puts a bomb in the speaker's platform of the Sport Palast. It is said that the bomb didn't go off because the guy who placed it got, in some way, stuck in the toilets. The Attempt 24 General Hans Oster and other high-ranking conservatives in the Wehrmacht formed a plan to overthrow Hitler if he declared war on Czechoslovakia. Forces controlled by the plotters would storm the Reich Chancellery, arrest or assassinate Hitler, take control of the government, and restore the exiled Wilhelm I. I as emperor. The plan was abandoned after Britain and France agreed to German annexation of Sudetenland in the Munich Agreement, neutralizing the immediate risk of war. Thus. Oster's conspiracy failed. Many of the conspirators later took part in the 1944 July 20th conspiracy. The Attempt 25 Swiss theology student Maurice Bavod posed as a reporter for a Swiss newspaper and planned to shoot Hitler from the grandstand stand as he passed through the parade. Hitler traditionally led a parade through the city's streets that retraced the route he and his band had taken in 1923. His view of Hitler was blocked by the unwitting crowd and he was forced to abandon the plan. 
He then attempted to follow Hitler but failed, and could do nothing except watch Hitler and his entourage turn a corner and disappear from view. Frustrated and nearly out of money, Babon gave up his quest to kill Hitler and decided to leave the country. He did not have enough money to travel to Switzerland, so he hid aboard a train bound for Paris where he hoped to obtain from the Swiss embassy sufficient funds to return to his parents' home. When he was discovered by a railroad conductor he was turned over to the police at Augsburg, who handed him to the Gestapo because he was a foreigner, and because he was carrying a gun and letter addressed to Handler. For some insane reason Babog had failed to dispose of the incriminating letters, and the weapon he intended to use against Hitler. Under arduous interrogation Babod eventually confessed his plan to the Gestapo. He was put on trial, found guilty. Babod was executed by Gilden at Berlin's Plötzen C prison on the morning of the May 14, 1941. The Attempt 26 English agents of the Russian NKVD investigated Hitler's habits in order to kill him. They planned to blow Hitler up in the restaurant Asteria Bavaria. When Germany reached an agreement with Russia the plans get cancelled. The Attempt 27 General Mitchell Karasuix Toprzewski and other members of the Polish army attempted to detonate hidden explosives during Hitler's victory parade in Warsaw 500 kilograms of TNT were concealed in a ditch, ready to be detonated by Polish sappers. However, at the last moment, the parade was diverted and the saboteurs missed their target. The Attempt 28 German carpenter George Elser placed a time bomb at the Bridge Gibraltar in Munich where Hitler was due to give his annual speech in commemoration of the Beer Hall, Putsch 1923. Hitler left earlier than expected and the bomb detonated, killing eight and injuring 62 others. Thirteen minutes after Hitler leaving the hall, as the entourage proceeded through the city toward the station, a loud explosion was heard coming from the direction of the hall. Everyone turned instinctively to the rear window of their cars, but they were too far from the explosion to see what had caused the blast. By the time they arrived at the station, the night was filled with the sounds of police and ambulance sirens, and the ringing of fire bells. Following the attempt failed, Johann George Elser was held as a prisoner for over five years until he was executed at the Dachau concentration camp less than a month before the surrender of Nazi Germany. Unfortunately for historical accuracy, the elusive answer to the question of who was actually behind the bombing of the Munich Beer Hall will probably never be resolved. The Attempt 29 German diplomat and resistance fighter Eric Kort hatched an assassination plot along with officer Hasso von Etzdorf to plan explosives, but the plan was abandoned after the security restrictions following George Elser's attempt to kill Hitler made the acquisition and concealment of the necessary explosives too dangerous. The Attempt 30 In Paris, two men planned Hitler's death. They were Lt. Fritz Dietloff Graf von der Schulenberg and Dr. Eugen Gerstenmeier. Schulenberg was a reserve officer who, as vice president of the Berlin police, had been an active participant in earlier attempted coups in Berlin. He was called to active duty in May 1940. Gerstenmeier was an official of the Evangelical Church, who worked in the Information Division of the Foreign Ministry. The coming victory parade in Paris provided the opportunity they needed. Their plan called for shooting Hitler while he stood in the reviewing stand along the parade route. On July 20 Hitler cancelled the parade. He quietly slipped unannounced into Paris in the early morning hours of July 23 and visited several places of personal interest, including Napoleon's tomb, the Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, and the Palace of Justice. Just as discreetly he left the city, his would-be assassins unaware of his brief sojourn there. The Attempt 31 in May 1941, a parade of German troops was again scheduled for Paris. German army and SS divisions were assembled, and a reviewing stand for Hitler and other dignitaries was constructed near the Place de la Concorde, for the parade on the Champs-Élysées. A plan to kill Hitler while he reviewed the parade was worked out by staff officers of Field Marshal von Witzleben's headquarters. Witzleben was Commander-in-Chief West, with headquarters outside Paris in Saint-Germain. The staff members, and an operations officer from the Paris commander's staff, were to shoot Hitler point-blank. If they failed to kill him, another officer was assigned to throw a bomb at him. The shooters were Captain Graf Schwerin von Schwanenfeld and Major Hans Alexander von Voss, both of Witzleben's staff, and Captain Graf von Waldersee of the Paris staff. 
Hitler frustrated his enemies once again, declining at the last minute to make the trip to Paris. The plotters again invited Hitler to visit Paris in 1942, but the wary Führer refused their invitation. Most assassination plots relied on Hitler's adherence to a predetermined agenda, but the assassins were invariably thwarted by Hitler's practice of avoiding routine or established schedules in his travels. Hitler's policy was to live his life irregularly, as he put it. Walk, drive and travel at irregular times and unexpectedly was his personal formula for security against assassins. The Attempt 32 Treskow first planned to assassinate Hitler in the late summer of 1941, while the Russian campaign was still going well for the Germans. Buck's troops were only 200 miles from Moscow, which many of the generals deemed the most important target in the Soviet Empire, when Hitler issued an order to divide Army Group Center's Panzer and other mobile forces in half, transferring half to Army Group North for its thrust against Leningrad, and half to Army Group South to help von Rundstedt's drive to capture Kiev, capital of Ukraine. Army Group Center would then have basically only infantry troops for its attack on Moscow. Halder and Brachich at OKH, in Bach at Army Group Center, objected strenuously to Hitler's plan, so strenuously that the Führer decided to visit Army Group Center to personally deliver the order to Bach. Treskow and Sklabrandorf welcomed this opportunity to kill Hitler and arranged, with a small group of officers, to shoot him when he entered one of their headquarters buildings. The visit was scheduled several times only to be cancelled, rescheduled, then cancelled again. Finally, in early August, a fleet of cars arrived from the Führer headquarters in East Prussia, to await Hitler's arrival. Hitler refused to use cars supplied by the army for fear, they might be booby-trapped with explosives. When he finally arrived at Box headquarters in Borisov, Treskow and his fellow conspirators were overwhelmed at the amount of security people that accompanied him, and the rigid security measures they imposed. The would-be assassins barely caught a glimpse of Hitler, much less an opportunity to shoot him. The Attempt 33 Stalin heard from the English that Hitler's train Europa came to Orsja on November 13. The place where the train stood was bombed. But Hitler wasn't there. He was at the Wolfschanz at that time. The story was never confirmed. Not by the Russians and not by the Germans. The Attempt 34 The NKVD made plans to kill Hitler in Moscow after the city fell in German hands. But it didn't carry out. The Attempt 35 Savage planes shoot at Hitler's plane. Some bullets hit the plane, but he was otherwise unhurt. The Attempt 36 Treskow engineered three failed final attempts on Hitler's life. In one, Colonel Steve secretly gathered a large quantity of explosives to use in an attack on Hitler. Two officers took the explosives to the grounds of Hitler's Rastenburg headquarters in East Prussia, where they buried them under a water tower to wait for the right occasion to use them. Inexplicably, the material exploded for no apparent reason, causing consternation among the SS guards and redoubling of security measures. With unusual good luck for the resistance, one of their member officers was assigned to investigate the incident. Colonel Werner Schroeder dragged his inquiry on so long that he never issued a report. The Attempt 37 General Der Jeberbstrap Hubert Lanz and Generals Hans Speidel, Hyacinth Graf Strachwitz, and Paul Loning planned to arrest or kill Hitler during his visit to Army Detachment Kempf in Ukraine. Strachwitz was to surround Hitler and his escorts with his tanks. Lanz stated that he would have then arrested Hitler, and in the event of resistance, Strachwitz's tanks would have killed the entire group. Hitler cancelled the visit and the plan was dropped. The Attempt 38 On the return flight from a front visit, Hitler visited the headquarters of the Army Group Center in Smolensk. During the visit there were several attempts on his life by Treskow's group. The Commander-in-Chief of the Army Group, Field Marshal Gunther von Kluge, knew about the plan but decided not to intervene. Major von Boseliger had formed a cavalry honor guard unit secretly packed with anti-Nazi officers. With this force he could intercept Hitler in the forest between the airfield and the HQ area, overwhelm Hitler's SS escort in a fair fight, and kill the Führer, but this option was rejected because even the plotters disliked the prospect of German soldiers fighting each other, and because the attack could fail if the escort was stronger than expected. As Kluge forbade the attack, 
citing his fear of a possible civil war erupting between the SS and the army. The plotters could shoot Hitler during dinner in the mess. This option was also abandoned for many of the plotters, abhorred the idea of shooting an unarmed man, and would not go along. However, the plan was abandoned when it became clear that Hitler would not be present. In the last ditch attempt, Fabian von Sklabrendorf gave a time bomb camouflaged as a package of two liqueur bottles to an officer and Hitler's entourage, as a supposed gift to a friend in Germany. The bomb was supposed to explode on the return flight over Poland. The bomb was expected to explode about half an hour later, with the plane near Minsk, close enough to the front for the plane's loss to be attributed to Soviet fighters but the package was placed in the hold of the aircraft, where it iced up, causing the detonator to fail. Realizing the failure, Sklabrendorf immediately flew to Germany and recovered the package before it was discovered. The explosives were later used by Gersdorf and Klaus von Stauffenberg. The Attempt 39 After becoming close friends with leading Army Group Center conspirator Colonel, later Major General, Henning von Treskow, General Major Gersdorf agreed to join the conspiracy to kill Hitler in order to save Germany after Treskow's elaborate plan to assassinate Hitler on March 13, 1943 failed. And the opportunity came when Army Group Center provided a collection of captured Soviet Army weapons to be displayed at a military museum in Berlin. The display was to open on March 21, 1943, with a personal viewing by Hitler, Luftwaffe Commander Hermann Göring, SS Reichsführer Heinrich Himmler, Kriegsmarine Commander Grand Admiral Karl Dunitz, and OKW Chief Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel. Colonel Gersdorf volunteered to be a human time bomb. He would carry the explosives inside his army coat, and as an expert, Gersdorf was to guide Hitler on a tour of the exhibition. A few minutes before Hitler arrived, he would start the ten minute fuses on the explosives. Just before the bombs would go off, he would rush to Hitler and embrace him, the explosion would kill both men. Despite the plan, at the last minute just before Hitler was to appear, his visit was reduced to just eight minutes as a security precaution, and he breezed through in just two minutes, leaving well before Gersdorf's explosives would have gone off. After Hitler had left the building, Gersdorf was able to defuse the devices in a public bathroom at the last second. After the attempt, he was transferred back to the Eastern Front, where he managed to evade suspicion. The Attempt 40 Standard German army uniforms had proven inadequate for the harsh conditions of the Russian winter, thus the army had a new winter uniform designed. A viewing of the new uniform by Hitler was arranged. The uniform was also to be adopted by the Waffen-SS and the Luftwaffe field divisions, so SS Chief Heinrich Himmler and Luftwaffe Commander Hermann Göring were expected to be present as well. This made for a great opportunity, the three most important and powerful Nazis could all be finished. After several misfires, due to a rescheduling made by one of the three men, the viewing was scheduled for November 16, 1943. Encouraged by Klaus Stauffenberg, Major Axel von der Busch agreed to carry out a suicide bombing in order to kill Hitler. Busch, who was over two meters tall, blonde and blue-eyed, exemplified the Nazi Nordic ideal, and was thus chosen to personally model the army's new winter uniform in front of Hitler. In his backpack, Busch concealed a landmine, which he planned to detonate while embracing Hitler. However, the viewing was cancelled after the rail car containing the new uniforms was destroyed in an Allied air raid on the night before carry out the conspiracy. The viewing was rescheduled, but again delayed by schedule conflicts among the big three Nazis until February. Meanwhile, von den Busch had to return to frontline duty, and was badly wounded, losing part of one leg, so he could no longer serve as model. The Attempt 41 The English gathered a lot of information about Hitler on the Eber Salzburg. They wanted to bring snipers to the hill, who could kill Hitler. When in 1944 it became very clear that the Germans would lose the war, the plans were cancelled. The Attempt 42 Captain Eval von Kleist volunteered to replace von Dambusch, and tried to carry out a suicide bombing similar to scheme of von Dambusch's at a viewing scheduled for February 11, 1944. Yet this event was repeatedly postponed yet eventually cancelled and later, the attempt 43. Two army conspirators smuggled a bomb into the wolf's lair, and lowered it into a water tower. But the bomb mysteriously exploded a few weeks later, jolting the SS guards. 
SS Chief Himmler immediately launched an inquiry into the incident, which was deliberately blocked by Lieutenant Colonel Werner Schroeder the investigative officer in charge and, as it turned out, a fellow conspirator. The Attempt 44 <laughs> Captain von Breitenbach was on the staff of Field Marshal Bush, now commanding Army Group Center. In early 1944, Bush and his staff were summoned to brief Hitler. Breton Butch volunteered to carry a 7.65mm Browning pistol concealed in his trouser pocket into the briefing, which took place on March 11th, and shoot Hitler. But on the day of the briefing, Hitler issued a fire directive excluding junior officers from fire briefings. On March 9, 1944, covert German resistance member Eberhard von Breton Butch and his aides were summoned to brief Hitler at the Berghof in Bavaria on March 11th. Bush and Breton Bunch traveled on a Condor aircraft to Bavaria, and were allowed into the Berghof. But SS guards had been ordered, earlier that day, not to permit aides into the conference room with Hitler, preventing Breton Bunch's attempt. The Attempt 45 The assassination attempt on July 20, 1944 was the most important attempt at overthrowing the military resistance during the Nazi era. The conspirators saw the killing of Adolf Hitler as a prerequisite for a change of power, also from the point of view of the oath on the Führer. After the conspirators fall back about carrying out the operation in the previous meeting on July 11, 1944 due to Himmler's absence, the opportunity came to the conspirators when it was decided to attend Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg among the military leaders scheduled to attend a secret meeting with the Führer in the Wolf's Den on the morning of July 20th, 1944. Then Klaus put the explosives in his own bag and put it where he stood next to Hitler in the conference room and then quickly left under the pretext an emergency phone call was answered. And minutes later one of the two bombs exploded after Klaus was able to leave the scene. However, Hitler survived the explosion of the explosive charge deposited on July 20, 1944 by Klaus von Stauffenberg's on meeting venue in Wolfslayer, and Hitler was only slightly wounded. Later, Klaus and the rest of the conspirators were arrested, and shortly after the assassination attempt, about 200 people were killed or driven to their death by Hitler's followers as, alleged, assassins or accomplices. General Feldmarschall Erwin Rommel was forced to commit suicide because he knew of the conspiracy, and did not report it to Hitler, although he was never involved in the conspiracy. Reasons for failure in summary, there were three main reasons why the Hitler regime was not overthrown despite the assassination attempt. The previous numerous attempted attacks against Hitler had to be postponed or broken off again and again for various reasons. When Stauffenberg's attempt on July 15 was not carried out, Parts of the Valkyrie plan had already been started under the false assumption that the attack had succeeded. Only with great effort and with a lot of luck succeeded in covering up these operations. Except for the car of the resistance, some supporters were no longer willing to risk their lives without absolutely reliable news of Hitler's death. The preparation for the seizure of power by the conspirators was in many ways completely inadequate. In particular, no provision had been made to make it impossible for those loyal to the regime to access radio and telecommunications after the attack. There was a lack of reliable military forces in Berlin to occupy and secure political centers such as the Propaganda Ministry, the Reich Security Main Office, important NSDAP offices and the Gestapo headquarters. Telexes from the conspirators did not reach the recipients quickly enough and at the same time. The conspirators did not succeed in using the radio stations anyway. In addition, Klaus von Stauffenberg, the central figure in this plan, was not available in the Bindler block until 4.30 p.m. because he was still on the flight back to Berlin. No doubt his personal presence there in the minutes and hours after the attack would have been of great benefit. Stauffenberg had a great deal of determination. It was in contrast to the fickle demeanor of the many who could only be drawn to the side of the conspirators, with the greatest reservations. These people wavered now and could not bring themselves to any activity. Furthermore, it was not agreed which measures should be taken if, despite the initial successful coup, there had been a long-term civil war in Germany in addition to the Second World War. The Attempt 46 in the last. On November 4, 1944, the American and the British Air Force did bomb a hotel in Milan, of which was said that Hitler was there at the time, but Hitler was at the Wolfschanz at the time. There are two hypotheses for the end of Adolf Hitler. The first, 
the official, is that he committed suicide with his wife, Eva Brown, in his Berlin bunker on April 30th, 1945. The second, unofficial, is that he was able to escape with his wife, Eva Brown, to Argentina and live there, out of sight and under the care of the President of Argentina, loyal to him at the time, until he left our world quietly in 1965. These attempts and information have been documented with witness testimony and evidence from German archives, and sources mentioned in the description. إذا أعجبك الفيديو لا تنسى الإعجاب والاشتراك بالقناة وتفعيل جرس الإشعارات ليصلك كل جديد